So let's begin tonight's show with some pretty tense news that's in fact coming in from the India-Pakistan border. This morning, all Indian troops along the border were put on high alert. They were asked to step up their vigil and be prepared for any untoward incident. So what does this mean? So let me try and put this in perspective. The Indian Army has been told to be ready for any unprovoked military incident. An incident that could potentially spark off a wider conflict. But before we go further, the latest update in Pakistan is that the Pakistani Supreme Court, headed by Chief Justice, who is known to be pro-Imran Khan, has declared that Imran Khan's arrest is illegal and unconstitutional. This happened at about 5.54 p.m. local time in Pakistan. Now, Imran Khan had been brought to the court, surrounded by a heavy security cover. And minutes into the hearing, the bench hearing the case deemed his arrest was just void. But that's not all. The judges also criticized the National Accountability Bureau for arresting the former Prime Minister of Pakistan from the premises of the Islamabad High Court. With these being the developments in Pakistan, the big question that we need to ask tonight is this. Why have Indian troops been put on high alert? But the answer is quite obviously Pakistan and also what is happening inside Pakistan. As we speak, at this moment, Pakistan is imploding with the common public in virtual rebellion against the army. Because they believe that it is the army that is orchestrating the trouble which began with the arrest of Imran Khan. Now, the president of Pakistan, Arif Alvi, is pro-Imran Khan. But the prime minister and the army chief at this moment, Asim Munir, are his deadly sworn enemies. Now, so far, at least about 10 people are said to have died in the protests and over 200 policemen, according to reports, have been injured. All schools across Pakistan are shut. The streets have turned into a battle zone. There is complete anarchy on the streets in Pakistan and army garrisons, believe it or not, army garrisons in Pakistan are under attack by its own people. Army officials are being targeted. Now, so far, these attacks have been limited to a few cities, such as Peshawar, Quetta and Lahore. But reports are coming in which say that soon these protests could engulf the whole of Pakistan. And when they do, there's of course a big possibility that the Pakistani army, which is on the back foot at this moment, domestically might attempt to ease the pressure that it is facing by employing a classic diversionary military tactic against the Indian state. Which is why India at this moment is on high alert along the entire Western Front. Additional security personnel have also been deployed on the ground and drones have been pressed into service for aerial surveillance across the border areas. Besides this, the Indian government has also pressed in sniffer dogs to assist the security personnel at various checkpoints. Now remember, there's been a spurt in terror activities along the border in recent days. There have been attacks in Jammu and Kashmir after a lull. There have also been sightings of some mysterious objects along the border. Now look at this report. On the 9th of May, a moon-shaped balloon was seized in Jammu and Kashmir's Samba district. The local police suspect that the balloon in fact came from across the border. Back in Pakistan, the people are waging what can only be described as an open rebellion against the strongest institution in Pakistan, which is the army. The Lahore Corps commander's home was burnt down. There were attacks on army headquarters in Lahore. Meanwhile, there are also reports that are floating on social media that say that voices within the army are not completely convinced about the manner in which the army has been caught completely off guard in trying to bring about the downfall of Imran Khan. Now, the army at this moment in Pakistan, there are some quarters of it who are pushing for some hardline steps, but there are also those within the Pakistani army who are urging for more restraint, who are refusing to, in fact, fire on their own people. And these voices apparently belonging to the army corps commanders. There are fears that dissenters could rise against the current army chief. The anger is directed against Lieutenant General Asim Munir, the army chief. You see, whenever a new army chief has taken charge in Pakistan, the remaining generals generally fall in line. But this time round, that hasn't been the case. Since last year, a couple of superseded generals have resigned from their position. The senior generals, such as Faiz Hamid, the former chief of the ISI, 
and also a known Imran Khan loyalist, he resigned as the co-commander of Peshawar immediately after Asim Munir assumed the top job. But despite his retirement, Faiz Hamid still commands a huge level of loyalty within the army. Could the generals who are loyal to him now oppose any future steps that the army takes against the PTI supporters? Now, the trouble within the Pakistani army does not, of course, end here. There is more proof of this alleged schism between the Pakistani army. In November 2022, the army held the 253rd Corps Commander Conference. This conference reportedly witnessed a clear split in the opinions of the country's top military generals. They were apparently divided over the political situation in the country and also the army's role in resolving what is happening at this moment. Now, five months on, the question, of course, is this. Have the fissures within the Pakistani army widened further? Could the generals who favor Imran Khan now stage a mutiny against the army's leadership in Pakistan? Now remember, these questions are not far-fetched because the army has a history of dissent in Pakistan, although such news is generally suppressed within the country. For instance, in 2011, Brigadier Ali Khan, with three generations of military service behind him, was arrested on charges of conspiring to incite a mutiny. Now Khan and three other officers were convicted of membership of the Hezbollah Tahrir, which is a radical outfit within Pakistan. And then we have Lieutenant General Shahid Aziz, a trenchant critic of General Parvez Musharraf and also the botched Kargil War of 1999. He joined the Al-Qaeda, accusing the army of fighting its own brethren and also siding with the United States. Believe it, an army general in Pakistan joining the Al-Qaeda. In 2014, rogue naval officers were accused of helping Al-Qaeda seize control of Pakistani warship to stage an attack on the United States fleet. Now, how many more such rogue officers are hiding within the Pakistani army ranks? And how many of them are, in fact, willing to put their weight behind Imran Khan? The big question, of course, is this. With the Pakistani army clearly on the back foot due to the anger that has been demonstrated by the people and the judiciary declaring Imran Khan's arrest to be unconstitutional, the question is, Will the Pakistani army now resort to some unwanted adventurism? Well, whatever the game plan that the Pakistani generals are up to at this moment, the fact remains that the Indian army at this moment is really well prepared for it. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.